All right, everybody, we are on page 495. Uh, the rest of the course is going to be trig. There's two units to trig. Um, obviously, just like everything else, we're going to pare it down a bit. But um, if you plan on doing any other math beyond this, especially calculus or anything in the university, trig is very important. So I'm going to go over all the key highlights. <clears throat> this first lesson should be a bit of a review for math 11, hopefully. It's just about angles and quadrants. Um, so we're going to scroll down here. All right. So this is your x, y axis. This is the x, and this is the y. But you can also measure them in angles. And zero degrees always starts over here on the right. And we rotate clockwise for a positive angle. Okay. So if we rotate 235 degrees, every quadrant, this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four, is 90 degrees. So if you add them all up, 90, 180, which is a flat line, 270, another 90 degrees, and then 360 all the way back <clears throat> to zero. So if we rotate 235 degrees, that means we've got 180 plus another 45. No, plus another 55. Are you guys? Plus another 55 degrees. All right, so 180 plus 55 will give us this whole angle here is 235 degrees. If you rotate in a negative, or you have a negative angle, you're going to counterclockwise. So negative 247, again, 180 to there. I have to go 67 more degrees to get there. Okay, so this whole angle here is negative 247 degrees. And please put the degree sign. You'll see later on that that becomes very, very important. Okay, so sketch the rotation angle. When they say rotation angle, you're always starting at zero. And state the quadrant in which the angle terminates. So in this one, if we go back up here, this 235 finishes in quadrant three. This two, negative 247, because we went in the other direction, we actually end up in quadrant two. Okay, so 290 degrees, positive, so we start at zero. You can look at this diagram, it's 270 to there, right? So we've gone all the way around to there. 270, we have to go 20 more degrees, and you just draw a line. I'm not, I don't care where you draw it, just make it look like it's in the right quadrant. That's all that really matters. So we are in quadrant four, and this whole angle here is 290 degrees. If we're doing negative 135, Start at zero. Remember, every quadrant is 90 degrees, and we're going in the negative direction. So this would be 270 if you're going positive. It's negative 90. Negative 180. Negative 270. So negative 135. We've got negative 90. We're not going to get to 180. So 90 plus how many more degrees to get to negative 135 is another 45 degrees. So we finish right there. Negative 135 degrees, and we are three. All right, final one 750. Well, you know, as positive, so all the way around once is 360. If you go around twice, that is 720. So that means I need a little bit more to get to 750. In fact, that little bit more would be. Um, 30 degrees, but that's the next part we're going to do. So this, these two circles, is 750 degrees, and it finishes in quadrant one. All right. Once you've gone, gotten that, this is the part in the class where I ask you to do question number one. And when you've done that, come back, and we will continue the lesson. All right. 
So we can also, because these are quadrants, let me see here, all right, and I already said that they're x, y, this is x, this is y. You can always talk about points and we can measure angles off of points, okay? And we will do that, but just as a refresher, you see the quadrants again. Here's the point A, which is negative three and four. Remember, X always comes first and then the Y. X is negative three, horizontal X axis, verticals are Y, and negative three and four. We went up to four, call that four. So we are in, I can draw that. And then the angle would be always from zero. That would be called theta. This is a theta, and you're gonna see that a lot. It just means an unknown angle. Okay, so we are in quadrant two. For this one, negative seven, negative two, x, y, negative seven, that's your x, that's your y. There's negative seven, negative two, call there. There's your point. You draw a line always from the origin to that point. And then the angle you would measure would be that. Okay. Um, we're in quadrant three. We're going to learn how to measure that angle, but we're not going to do it right now. Okay. Now we're going to skip all of this stuff. And we're going to go to this reference angle. You're going to see over and over again, so it is very, very important that you understand this. A reference angle is the acute, so that means less than 90 degrees. Okay, less than or equal to, I should say. Form between the terminal arm, basically the arm that you draw, this would be a terminal arm. Okay, of the rotation angle, and the rotation angle is from the origin, from, or sorry, from zero degrees, okay? This point right here is where you start your rotation um, and the x-axis. So the reference angle is always back to the x-axis. Um, so if we do a rotation angle of 120 degrees, starting here, we rotate to 120 degrees. They, for the reference angle, they want to know what is that angle there, because we always go back to the x-axis, and this is the x-axis, the horizontal. So if I've rotated 120, how many more degrees do I need to go to get to 180? Well, that's going to be 180 minus 120, which is 60 degrees. So our reference angle, ref, and that's a little angle sign, is 60 degrees. Okay, we're gonna practice this. So, if we have a rotation angle of 243 degrees, positive, so you rotate counterclockwise, 180, that's 270 here, so we don't make it to 270, so we know we're somewhere in here. Well, I rotated 180 to there. How much further do I have to go? How much further do I have to go to get to there? I, what is that angle there? Well, 243 minus 180 is 63 degrees. That means this angle is 63 degrees. That is your reference angle because it's back terminal arm, and the x-axis. It doesn't matter if you have to go back to the x-axis. You always go back. You go to the closest x-axis you can get to. So in this case, because we just went past it, we go back to it. Whereas in this one here, we didn't quite get to it, so we, I measured this bit here. All right. <clears throat> 337 degrees. What quadrant am I in? Where do I end up? Well. I've gone past 270, so I'm to there. I don't make it to 360, so I know 
I've finished somewhere in there. Okay. This whole angle is 337. And our reference angle goes back to the x axis. So the reference angle will be this bit right here. What is that angle? If I have 337 to there, how much further to get to 360? Well, if you go 360, and you don't have to write this out, you can just tell me the answer when I ask it, and we'll get to the point where that's all I'm going to care about. 360 minus 337 is 23 degrees. So this angle is 23 degrees. All right, final one, 70 degrees. Well, I haven't even made it to 90, so I'm in quadrant one. I've rotated 70 degrees. What's my reference angle? Back to the x-axis, the closest x-axis, it's 70 degrees. If you're in the first quadrant, your rotation angle, well, that's not true. In this case, um, the rotation angle is 70 degrees, all right? So the rotation and the reference angle are the same thing for this case. All right. These are just this little bit here. I don't usually go through this, but what it's telling you is how to calculate the reference angle. I think it's kind of intuitive once you've done a few, but basically if you're in quadrant one, like I said here, the rotation angle equals the reference angle. I don't really like that because it's not always true, but okay. Uh, the if you're in quadrant two, so that's like this one here, all right? The rotation angle is equal to 180 degrees minus the reference angle, or you could say um, the reference angle equals 180 minus the rotation. But you can figure out which one you want to use. In this one, the rotation angle is 180 plus the reference because we've gone just past it in quadrant three. And if you're in quadrant four, it's 360 minus the reference angle, or 360 minus the rotation angle. Anyway, um, I don't really memorize those. I just kind of figure it out just by looking at it. <clears throat> okay, so state the reference angle for each of the following rotation angles. This is the same question we just did here, but they didn't give us these things. Okay, so we're just going to draw those. I think they want you to use these formulas, but the formulas are kind of eh. So you draw this. You know that's zero, that's 90, that's 180. You don't have to label it all the time, but I'm just doing it because we're just about to this. When you come all the way around, that would be 360 again. So 195, just past 180, so I end up there. I want to know the reference angle. They're asking me, what is that angle there? Well, if it's 195 all the way, if I go 195 minus 180, that gives me 15 degrees. That's my reference angle. This little angle right here is 15 degrees. All right, B, negative 258. All right, negative, so we're going the other way. So you could label this as zero. You could say this is negative 90, negative 180, negative 270. So I go past 180, but I don't make it to 270. So you know that we're in there. I've rotated all the way to there, so negative 258. So they're asking me for this angle. So how much further past 180 did I go? Okay, I'll just go 258 minus 180 is going to be 78 degrees. And reference angles are always positive. All right, it doesn't matter that we had measured a negative degree. Reference angles are always positive. So, um, yeah, just... I'm going to write this reference angle always positive. Please remember that. 
They are always, always positive. Okay. <clears throat> Negative 8, 10. So, 0. We're going negative, so negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and this would be negative 360. All right, so we go all the way around once, so it's negative 360 degrees. You keep going twice is negative 720. I'm going in the positive direction. Oh, damn. It's been a long day, guys. Okay, so negative 360. Negative 720. How much further do I go? 720 to 810. Well, boom. It's another 90 degrees. So this, all of that, is negative 810 degrees. So what is my reference angle? It's back to the x-axis. doesn't matter if you go to that one or you go to that one. The angle is going to be, reference angle is equal to 90 degrees. And we'll learn later on why it doesn't matter which one you go to. 90 is sort of a special case. Okay, last question. Determine four angles between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, which have the same reference angle as a rotation angle of negative 128. Okay, so we draw our little grid. We have a rotation angle of negative 128, so we have to mark that first. Uh, negative 128, so we negative 90, negative 170. Like I said, you don't have to label all those. If you just draw the grid and draw it, I'm fine with this. Negative 128 means we're in there because we don't quite make it to 180. So there's our negative 128. Okay. So what is our reference angle? What's the first thing? All right. Find our reference angle. So I want to find this. What is that angle? We always go back to the closest x-axis. If it's 128 to there, how much further do I need to go to get to 180? Well. 180 minus 128 should spit out 52 degrees. That is my reference angle, 52 degrees. Okay. And they're asking to determine four angles between 0 and 360, which have the same reference angle as this. Well, what they're saying is if you have a reference angle of 52 degrees in the first quadrant, you have a reference angle of 52 degrees in the second quadrant. You have a reference angle of 52 degrees in the third quadrant. And if you have a reference angle of 52 degrees in the fourth quadrant, what are your rotation angles? In other words, if I rotate to there, what's my angle? It's not going to start at zero. Well, if you're in quadrant one, your rotation would be 52 degrees. If you go keep going to there, now you're in quadrant two. One, two. In quadrant two, your rotation will be 180 minus 52, because you don't quite make it to 180, which is 128 degrees. If you're in quadrant three, so we kept going all the way to there. I went 52 degrees past 180. Okay. My rotation will be 180 plus 52, which is 232 degrees. And if I'm in quadrant four, I went all the way to there. I'm 52 degrees short of 360. It will be 360 minus 52 degrees, which is 308. Okay. So, a um, couple things you need to know what a reference angle is. It is so important for this whole unit. 
So going back here, this, you need to know this, okay? The acute or less than 90 degree angle formed between the terminal arm of the rotation angle and the x-axis. So it is, if you drew a picture, it's always going back to the x-axis. Always, 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 and it's always positive. Always positive. All right, you need to practice this, so please practice this. I would like you to do numbers four, five, and six, but for six, just do A and B. All right, um, if you have any questions, email me. Good luck.